Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today is day 27 of our 30 day SQL challenge and we're going to look at a scenario and practice answering four questions that apply to that scenario. So if you are new to the 30 day challenge, welcome. There are two QR codes on the screen in front of you. One is a topic list where you can see the links to all the past videos as well as supplemental resources. And on the right is a Facebook support group where you can ask SQL questions, find a study buddy and more. So for today and tomorrow, we're gonna focus on answering questions that apply to a given scenario. So you're going to practice a lot of the SQL skills that you have already learned throughout this challenge. So we're still using that Chinook Music Store database and they want you to analyze their sales data to provide insights to help the store increase its revenue, whether that's understanding who to market to based off of their top customers, which countries are have the most invoices and contribute to the most sales, what countries are up and coming because maybe they can expand their market in that country and more. So here are the questions that we're dealing with today. We want the average invoice total by customer. We want the top 10 customers with the most invoices. We want the top 10 customers with the highest purchase amount. And we want to analyze the total sales by country. So let's go ahead and hop into SQLite Studio and answer these questions. Now, feel free to pause the video and answer these questions on your own just to get some practice. But in this case, we are looking at the average invoice total by customer. And we wanna be able to return important customer demographics, such as the name of the customer, as well as their invoice total. So let's look at our invoices table. And we see that we have a customer ID. We also have the total where we can get an average of. Our customers table has our customer information. Now, what column do we have in common for the customers and invoices table? That common, that common column is customer ID. So we should be able to join on customer ID to get information from both of these tables. So let's go ahead and I'm going to run a select clause and I want to return the information about my customer. The first name and last name suffice. Maybe you also want to return their phone number so you can follow up with them. So feel free to return any important customer demographics that you see fit. But I'm going to do C dot first name. And I'm gonna concatenate this. This is what that double pipe is with a space another pipe to their last name. So this is going to give me their full name. So just in this one line of code, we were able to concatenate, which means add. So adding the first name column to the last name column separated by a space. We need the double pipes on both ends and we were able to create the alias full name. Awesome. So now we want to use an aggregate function and we want the average invoice total by customer. So I'm gonna call AVG and I'm going to do i.total because that is the invoice total. And I'm gonna alias this as AVG invoice total. And then from, so I'm gonna start with the customers table first. It doesn't matter if you start with customers or invoices table since you're just doing an inner join. So I'm gonna do customers. What have I already aliased this table as? C, so I'm gonna do customer C. Join invoices and I have aliased that as I. And once we do a join, we need to tell it what column to join on. So this is gonna be on c.customerid equals i.customerid. And that's my join. But I wanna get the average by customer. So I have to group by a customer variable. So in this case, I'm gonna do group by c.customerid. 
And say, for instance, I want the highest customer to be at the top of my list. So I could do an order by here and I'm going to order by average invoice total descending. Okay. And then when I run this, I get a nice little query here. All right, where I get the average invoice total. And I see that I have a lot of decimal places. So I can add another function around my average to take this to two decimal places. And we just most recently learned this function in the last video. It is called round. So I'm gonna enclose this in a round, comma one to round to one decimal place and let's see what it gives me. And it gives me exactly what I need, one decimal place. So in this one question, you have concatenated, you have used aliases to rename your columns, you have used an aggregate function as well as another numeric function, you have performed an inner join, you have done a group by, and you have also ordered your data to have the customer with the highest amount at the top. Now, what if I'm only concerned about customers who have a average total more than six, I can do a having clause because the having filter is based off of the group by. So this is only going to filter customer IDs having an average invoice total greater than 6.0. So let's see what this does now. And then when I scroll down, I only see that I have 11 customers that have an average invoice greater than 6.0. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this query because we're gonna eventually apply our learnings to a nice little project so people can see that we can write queries. So I'm gonna hit the save button and I'm gonna highlight my documents and I'm gonna save this as, let's say Chinook query dot SQL. And I'm gonna save it right in my documents folder. I'm gonna make sure there's only one R in query and I'm just gonna hit save. Okay, so now let's go to our next question. What are the top 10 customers with the most invoices? So the top 10 customers with the most invoices. So how can we do that? So when we want to count the number of invoices, so we're gonna use an aggregate function such as count. We want customer information still, as well as invoice information. So we know that we're going to have to do a join. So let's go ahead and start off with the same select. So let's select C dot first name, muscle memory at this point concatenate a space so we can add that to their last name as full name, right? And now we want to have, see who has the most invoices, who's calling us up the most, whether they're small invoices or not, and getting our product more. So we're gonna do a count and we're gonna count the invoice ID because that's how we can get accounts of invoices and we're gonna alias this as invoice count. So just like the previous query, we're gonna do from the customer's table, I've already aliased this as C, join invoices, alias that I, on C.CustomerID equals I.CustomerID, because that's the column that they have in common. And now we are going to group by, because we want to get the most invoices by customer. So we are going to group by um, customer ID, because we want to get our counts by customer ID. And then we're going to order by invoice counts and I want the customers with the top counts at the top. So I'm going to do descending. And since I want the top 10, I'm going to do a limit of 10. So a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and run this. It says they don't have one. I misspelled customer ID somewhere. So customer ID, customer ID. 
Chinook ambiguous column name customer ID. Okay, let's see here. So we can troubleshoot C dot. Let me just retype all of my customer IDs. So I actually know. Even I get errors, so it's always good for you to see troubleshooting in real time. Group by, oh, ambiguous. I didn't put C. Okay, C dot customer ID. So in this case, it's saying you have customer ID in both the invoices and customer table. Which one do you want to use? So I'm doing C dot customer ID. Awesome. Here we go. And we get the top 10 that all of these customers have had seven invoices, okay? All right, so that was awesome. Let's go ahead and hit save. It's gonna save right into that same file. And let's go to the next query. So what are the top 10 customers by purchase amount? So how can we change that query that we just did to actually do purchase amount versus count of invoices? So I'm gonna copy this, Command C and paste and instead of doing a count here i want to do a sum and i want to sum that total column so i'm going to do sum of i dot total and i'm going to save this as total amount now i can order by total amount descending and i still want those top 10 customers so now I spelled total wrong, my bad, SQL. I can get the total amount here. Awesome. So I'm gonna save that query. And our last one is, what are the total sales by country? So if I want to do the total sales by country, then I want to actually return the country information and the number of sales. So let's go ahead do my customers database have country information yes it does so we're still working with customers and invoice let's go ahead and select the country and we want to do total sales so that's a sum of i dot total as total sales from customers let's see join invoices as i let me put some space right there so we can see on the same thing customer id equals i dot customer id and instead of grouping by customer id what are we going to group by here since we want country information we're going to group by country and we want our top countries to appear at the top so we're going to order by total sales descending So let's go ahead, run this. Okay. Then let me put my thing up here. And this is what I have, right? Where I have my total sales, USA coming at the top, then Canada and France, right? It looks like Brazil might come into the top three soon. So we can analyze our market in Brazil to see if we can kind of get it up here in numbers as well. Or we can focus on the least popular countries to figure out how we could do better marketing strategies or what's going on there. Notice that I have a lot of decimal points, so we can encase this in a round as well. So let's just round this to one. And here we are. And say for instance, I only want the top five, we can put a limit of five there. So all of these are very similar queries for day one, which we're going to talk about other queries tomorrow, but really focus on joins, using these aggregate and numerical functions, your aliases, your having by filters, making sure you order the data in the appropriate manner, and so forth and so forth. So I'm just going to hit save there. And that is our scenario for today. 
So thank you, go back, practice it, add more scenarios, explore your data, keep writing SQL queries. I'm going to put my Etsy and buy me a coffee in the description below so you can support the channel. Please like the video, it helps me so, so much, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, bye-bye.